Hi, everybody. Hi. All right. And we're going to be talking today about my greatest gift. Okay. Whenever you're thinking of our gift and our greatest gift right, in life, we have several ways of interpreting it. I'm going to be working in two levels that are going to be intermingling, right? basically in two semantic fields. And they are, I'm going to be using gift in the sense of a, a present that we have, but I'm going to be using it as a pun as well, because we're going to be talking about the present tense and the present reincarnation. It's not only the gift as such as a present, but I'm going to be also talking about present tense Right? the present time, and also the present reincarnation. So basically, we are going to be answering this, what is the greatest gift I have got in my life so far? And to do so, I'm going to be using parts of the gospel, I'm going to be using philosophical approach of a guy called Eckhart Toller. Uh, he has no denomination, uh, religious denomination at all. And I'm going to be using parts of uh, uh, Joanna the Angelis as well. And the so-called serenity player, uh, prayer. So they're going to be all connected here. So these are the two things that we're going to be starting with, right? Our present time and our present reincarnation. My present moment and my powerful moment. Now, this is what I like you to start. It is very interesting because human being is spend most of the time not in the present. We spend most of the time in two other times, which is past and future. We are not taught or we do not exercise a lot to be really feeling the time. So if, if you're climbing the stairs, you don't think of what you're doing. You just climb it, think of something else. If you're washing your hands, you do not th think I am washing my hands, right? Because we are not taught so. Nowadays, there are lots of new schooling methods that you teach children to benefit from experiencing the moment. Let's think of washing the hand, right? We have all sensations here. You may have the smell of the soap. We may have the, the, the touch of the water, the temperature. You may have the movements of your hand, right? How it feels to do it. But we don't think of that. And because we don't think of these minute things, when it comes to our big things, we continue avoiding present. And if we pay attention in our mind, when we think of the past, we think of things that happened, and you are either frustrated, you are either, uh, let's say, perhaps you have some hatred because it triggered a process, or you are resentful, there are some rancor, some grudge, or positive things. But when you put in balance, the negative side stays longer than the positive side. When you think of what you're going to be doing, it's not reality yet. You're thinking of planning, uh, of you're doubting if it's going to happen or not. Perhaps you're going to be anxious. Very rarely you're going to be thinking of you're going to be sad. Although you know that something is already doomed to happen in the case of a disease. But you're oscillating, right? And the idea here is to say, how can we benefit of discovering what's going on, not only in activity, but also in our body, and try to shift and find a scape, a pathway, so that we can move from what is a situation of life to real life. When you read the Spirit's book, you know that the real life is the spiritual life, right? And this is the transitory one. But we are so much attached to the transitory one that we believe that what is transitory is permanent. And that prevents us from really touching the spiritual world very often. And generally what we do when we have a program, I'm going to go to the center. Or it is time at night, I'm going to think of what I have done and th thank God. Right? But this is the real life. How can I bring it to the present moment 
and feel my present moment more often with what is real. Because future, it hasn't happened yet. It's not real. It's illusion, imaginary. Past is no longer here. It's past, as, as the name says. But we occupy of these two imaginary, and these two imaginary world pollutes ourselves, right? So I'm going to be presenting here using the first person singular, like I, I, I. Because generally when you talk, you talk about people do that. But on purpose, I'm thinking of the process that I've been going through for more than 15 years in my life. And I'd like you to identify with myself assuming the discourse, the speech, instead of talking about somebody else. It's very easy to talk about somebody else. So that's why we have to read something and bring it to life. Because the tendency to think that it happened to them, not to me. All right? This is very common. It's a, uh, it's a natural mechanism of defense. Also, a, a very starting point of self denial that's not going to happen to you. Okay? So, it's very important to use the I here. So, let's go here. So, at the present, at this moment, right, I find my only and unique time and space to be evolve and transcend. If you're going to go to elimination. So if this is the moment that I can be, evolve, transcend, I cannot really glad it. When you open the missionary of light, Andrea Luis says, when he's describing chapter 12, he's describing the human body, female human body, and when he comes to the point of uh, focusing on the womb of a mother, he describes the womb as that is my blessed door for my redemption. And when we come to the redemption time, we forget that this is blessed. But that's the way that he defines the womb. Because that's my opportunity in coming back to the reading and coming back, right? That is my opportunity in the present time, be it reincarnation or now. Okay? Why not talk about the past and the future as my best, even though you may have a very glorious past time? Because you can no longer change it. You cannot give an, another direction as past. And remember that in the doctrine, we always think of cause and effect. And most of the time when we think of effect, we think of the, of the past, because the effect is now. And since we are in a very, very troublesome situation, or anxiety, or frustration, or sadness, we forget that now is the time to start causing other effects. Mm -hmm. We think that now is only paying for what we have done, or getting the reward of what we have done, as if we're going to be finished now. So my present time, it is the moment to start new causes. So instead of listening, listing the reason why I am either receiving a prize today or being recognized or being rewarded and then I have reason A, B, and C or in a very bad situation I have A, B, C, D, and Z, Z right? It is to say what I'm doing to cause more positive effects. Okay? So this is the reason why we're not going to be placing the exercise in the past and future because it is the present that I have to work. The workable component is the present. Right? We end up to a point that we become prisoner of past and future without realizing. Think of you on a daily basis when you get the car, you go to work, etc. We have the illusion that we are working in the present, but everything that is happening in my mind is what happened yesterday what I have to do today just to correct yesterday, or why I'm celebrating because it was yesterday and what's going to be coming tomorrow because I have to render something, I have to deliver something. Very rarely we are really in ourselves. And it happens in the car. Very rarely we are driving a car thinking of everything that's happened as I did when I was washing my hand, right? Or when I'm climbing the stair, or when I enter the elevator, okay? Sorry. Now, and then we are going to be come to a point that we're going to be having what is turbulence. Generally, it is in the past or in the future because it's 
taking me out of my present? Is it stealing my present to preoccupy my mind? And we're going to be finding real calmness, stillness, quietness. Love it is in the present, right? So upon facing afflictive, despairing, and gloomy situation, situations, and pay attention to gloomy and situation because everything that we are experiencing are situations of life. It is not real life as such. They are transitory, right? And whenever you have this afflictive feeling or sadness or preoccupation or anxiety, you are always in a dark moment. You are not really full of light and inspiration and creation. These are the things that are impeding or preventing us to get the resource and create because you are occupied. We are occupied all the time, right? So whenever we're facing this, right, the things that bother, annoy, confuse, irritate, or torture me, how can I, my mind clear up and calm down so that I can become quite tranquil and peaceful? Right? How can I open a inner room to illumination through God's words. How can I talk to God when I'm really disturbed? Am I really talking? Am I talking to or talking with? If I'm disturbed, do I have space, room in my mind to listen to somebody else? It is difficult to listen my girlfriend's recommendation or appreciation or evaluation or praise of the situation. Right? Is there room for God to talk to me? Do I start a, a repetitive, formulaic prayer and repeating, 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 trying to grab a, the pathway to a way out? Right? So what should I do to compulsively repeat words, phrase, or formulaic prayers? How may I talk with myself and end up with talking to God? Have I been trying to pay close attention to my emotional and mental states? Or I'm just living it without understanding it? There are many, many people, even very, very close entourage, that they feel bad, but they don't have a name for that. This is the lack of analytical approach and the opportunity to use nomenclature. They say, I'm not well. OK, but what are you feeling? How you describe it? Right? How do you start physically? Right? Are your hands cold? Are you sweating? Do you feel any stomach disturbance? Right? Or do you feel that your voice is sort of breaking? Or are you gasping air? Is there any acceleration in your breathing in, breathing out process? We don't stop to think of that. We just go. We're thinking for the solution or for something as if you're like Deo Maxica, uh, Mackie, like it's going to be coming and see a, a God's hand and change it. But we are not even able to read physically how we are. Or if I'm very, very happy, I'm so happy that I don't think of what I'm, how I am here physically. Is my heart thumping? Right? Am I smiling at everything? Right? Am I, am I pronouncing, am I uttering good words without, without even realizing that I'm, I'm connecting people? I'm not separating. I'm welcoming in my gestures. So this is the thing that we have to start doing to go to the big step. It's very easy to say we have to renew ourselves. We have to forget the old man. Spiritual has lots of recommendations of that. But we have to be putting together how you do it. Right? If you are not so much exact in reading physical sensation, what about emotional? Is it sadness or depression? How long have you been sad? Right. Or you feeling at a loss what to do? We are not even judging the reason why. We're just uh, the approach of a descriptive approach. Why do you think you feel a loss? or not to do. I, I, don't, I don't feel like getting out of bed. I don't feel like turning on the TV. I don't feel like grabbing a book. I don't feel like uh, eating. Or I'm eating compulsively. I'm just eating two hours ago and now I'd like to eat again. 
right? We are not even the judgmental process, but we have to start observing. And when you start observing, by definition, you are, or I am in the case, the subject and the object of my analysis. Immediately, I split myself. There is one portion observer, playing the observer, and the other one the observed. Just by splitting myself, I start find a way out because I'm not totally immersed in the state of disturbance. Because I'm saying, oh, this time I was really, really pissed off. I was really irritated, but I haven't pronounced any word. I, didn't, I haven't cursed. In general, I curse. Or I've been going through this situation and I haven't complained yet. Or, or the other way around. Oh, I've been complaining a lot. Even though nobody have, has told me, but I've been complaining a lot. I've been moaning, whining, right? So these are the things that we have to be, to clear out our mind, to find room for calmness. So the very first thing is gonna be like this, right? Self-observation. Am I relaxed and quiet now? Think of you now, right? Because you're listening to me. You are immersed in this speech. But how I'm sitting down now, how do I feel my feet? How do I feel my, my mind here? Am I dividing speech? I'm sharing my inner voice with Carlos' voice? We have to stop thinking of this so that we can clear up. If we don't clear up situation, there is no room for illumination. We talk about enlightenment, betterment, but it's difficult to go there if we do not help ourselves to do it. Right? It's not only just praying or studying the book or knowing all the, every, the content of hell, uh, heaven and hell, knowing the content of Genesis, but is the message really working inside? Or am I able to say, wow, there are something that I had some resistance and now I'm just speaking naturally. As is, I, I've adopted the text as if it were my own discourse, my own speech. I no longer have this quote and quote in my mind. So it's part of me. So we, I have to realize that. If I, don't, if I don't realize that, I'm gonna be just wasting energy, movement, time, and I'm not, not gonna go anywhere, right? So it might relax and quiet and now at this moment, how do I feel, right? What is happening inside me at this very moment? Am I hungry, right? Am I thirst? Am I anxious to go to the second slide or the, the following one, right? We start to have to start thinking, how am I processing information? Am I impatient during the course because there is somebody that is lagging behind and I have already understood and I'd like to move forward, what I'm learning from, oh, I am an impatient person. Or during this situation, I tend or I'm prone to be impatient, right? Or everybody's talking and I have not found room for me and I feel frustrated. What kind, what is revealing about myself? I'd like to express my, my ideas before and not listen to everybody's idea. And then at the end of, of, of the day, I have nothing to add and I feel frustrated. Or, you know what, I've just found out that I'm a very good person to draw conclusions. I got everybody's opinion, no matter if they are in harmony or not, and I sum it up and I draw conclusion. So what have I found out about myself? But we have to observe what is happening, right? Now, what is my current emotional state? This question, we don't, we don't ask at home this question. If you, see your, if you see your child, you read read him and read her, and you just give the name, right? Why are you sad? Why are you so uh, irritated? Why are you bothered? Why are you annoyed? But you, you don't ask open the, open the question. And, and how do you feel now? How do you describe it? We just tag it. And then I understand annoyance or bothersome according to my mom or my dad's tag. And then I'm not able to read in somebody else's behavior the same because they qualified as annoyance this kind of behavior displayed and not the one that you are displaying. We do not assume the reading process. We just repeat. We inherit 
the, the, the nomenclature. Because whenever you give a name, you reduce the emotion. Right? Because you frame it. Until another name comes in clash, then you try to find another meaning for the word. Okay? So how do I feel now? What moves my inner being now? So in my life now, am I 100% okay? Am I 100% content with? Am I 100% enthusiastic about? Am I 100% thrilled about this, what I'm doing? So what's the name that I give to my feelings about my career, my marriage, or I just go? And I'm not able to, to say it, right? In the marriage situation, there are different photos, different days. And for sure, there are different names. There are different adjectives to qualify it. And because we do not use, we do not talk about, we just accrue, accumulate the emotion, and we continue. If, of course, it's going to be more and more difficult to share with. Because we're going to be sharing at the moment of explosion. <laughs> and I'm going to be sharing on a daily basis. It's going to be sharing in my very bad picture of myself. Okay? So what pleases me, what bothers me now. Right? I don't like the color of this light. I don't think that this, is, it, it, this looks like McDonald's. It looks like Burger King. All, right? all food, light food, restaurant, they are all this color. So I'm just processing like this, right? I'm just making up now. But I have, to, I have to say what I'm perceiving, OK? Or I like the pictures more than words. I'm waiting for the next sunset or twilight or whatever is there, right? So what effects such feelings exert on, on, on my body? Now, with this personal observation, right, we stop for a few seconds observing the breathing, the flow of air of ourselves. In, in our spirits book class, because I'm so much accustomed to doing that, I do very fast and sometimes I do not respect the time of the, of the students, right, because we have to do prayer a lot, right? But I know that when I sit down and I say, I'm, I'm going to be maybe close to the eyes, or the, I, don't, I don't need dimming the light. When I say I'm going to go inside, because I've been doing 15 years, I go inside very fast. Right? I may enter a plane and say, I'm going to go inside, the plane is going to be crashing, I'm still inside, and haven't realized that uh, I'm already no longer there. Because it's, I do very fast that. But it's not the very same for everybody. Right? Sometimes we depend more on external conditions. I do need good ventilation, dim in the light, a soft music, breathe in, breathe, breathe out like five times. And then I start my, my voyage, go inside me. But the more we do, you, it's faster. It's like turn off light, turn, turn off the light, turn on the light. Okay? So feel the vital energy inside. This is a key point because when I'm in turbulence, this vital energy is not the very vital energy or the vital fluid of the universe. It is the disconnected uh, energy. That's the importance of calming down. Or when we come here that we have like 15 or 10 minutes or five minutes here inside, if we just relax, and there is no need to start praying. But just to say, I'm gonna be using five minutes to just to observe myself. How am I breathing? How am I sitting down? How I feel? Because just by doing that, whatever is read here, or any comment or any lecture, there will be another way of getting into the door. It's going to be the blessed door. Okay? So, then we have, do I recognize the way that I'm breathing, analyzing, or just simply observe it? Focus, I have to focus my attention on what is going on inside, and then you go deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper. And sometimes you may say, do you know what? I don't feel comfortable going deeper than this. Or I think I'm going to sleep. Or I think that my consciousness is going to be melting down. And I'm afraid I have to come back. Because I have a control and I do prefer to choose the, my, or do the choosing here or make the choice about what I think and not be dominating by, right? But I have to pay attention to this, okay? So let's go here. So where is the way out to, or where do we find a more soothing and clear energy? 
I try to find out another energetic field on my inner area where there is a less darkness, less turbulence, less confusion, less pain, more serenity, more crisis and calmness. So I feel that I'm uh, agitated. I'm sitting down here, sort of anxious, I'm going to be delivering a speech, and immediately I start thinking of previous speech that were very successful that I, I managed to pass along and get across very clearly or I think of any situation in the school or in my work that I felt very calm, still, that people told me that I brought good energy, that I connect the people and they are happy to be with me. Just by going this shift, I start looking for light and not being dominated by the gloomy situation of my anxiety. Okay. I look for a passage, a pathway between my physical existence and my essential being. And all of a sudden we start saying that the more I visit my essential being, the more I try to talk to myself in a very peaceful way, accepting what I feel, not rejecting, not condemning, or not uh, rebelling. I, I find a space of acceptance, harmony, and peace. I'm not even there in love. I'm, for, I'm, I'm still in the cradle to get to the enlightenment. But just to find this atmosphere here, right? Or the time that I, I, I had a very good hug with my son, right? Or when somebody just thanked me in a very, very wonderful way in my hospitality life. Right? So we start listing and making inventory of situations that we have a way out to luminosity, to illumination. But if we, if we don't do this, we don't have this inventory. And when you are in the moment of need, they do not come naturally. The mind is not trained for that. Because the mind is trained to identify itself to the situation. Easy process, less energy. There is an identification of the mind with the situation. And we think the situation is all. Right? I have to pay my condominium, and I'm really here thinking of my condominium, my condominium. And I'm not thinking of a resource, I'm thinking of my condominium, the, the deadline. All of a sudden, I am the condominium. I have all the committee uh, accusing me. I, I, I three o'clock in the morning, I wake up because somebody's saying, tomorrow's the condominium, because I'm full of condominium issues. And I think that life is condominium issues. And if you talk to me, there is no interest in your conversation because you're not condominium issues. Because <laughs> I'm imprisoned by my own mind that has been identified with this, right? We're going to see that this is called the pain body, and it has its own life, okay? So let's move in here. So by unceasing mental noise prevents me from finding the pathway, because I'm repeating, I'm, I'm talking to me in a way that's not welcoming to myself, right? And <clears throat> We say that find the pathway towards my innermost quiet realm, which is inseparable from my being. My mind ties me to the difficult physical existence, depriving me from the possibility of really being, because condominium is what matters. Okay? Everybody has, a, and I'm not, I'm not talking about a spirit talking to me, okay? It is it's part of you, you yourself, like animism. I'm not talking about the, your being the. Uh, third party used by a spirit. We have our inner voice, right? And sometimes it's, it's our in, our between code. Maybe a collective conscious, uh, collective mind. Maybe my, my, my mother and my granny's voice that I have already assumed that it's mine. It's so inside me, so internalized that I don't recognize anymore that this is my mother's words, my mother's sentence, or my father's attitude. I think it's mine, okay? So this is the internal voice. So I soon realize that the voice uh, is there and that I am here listening to the voice, even looking at it with the mental images in movies. And whenever you hear a voice, it is not only the sound, you picture. And the same words will be provoking another picture in Angela, because each one brings his or her own picture and movie inside. Because right? when I say a cat, each, each one think of a different cat, not the same cat. Isn't it so? 
right? You have the animal, we have the sound, and we have the significance, the relevance which you experience, right? So each one bring a different picture in, in, in mind, right? This is the, one of the reasons, there's a mistake here. This is one of the reasons that it's so difficult, what is called a fraternal talk, right? Because I'm, I'm talking about the things that I picture, the things that I have lived, I'm using my glasses, which is my experience. And the person that is talking to me in a very delicate situation, suffering or, in cra or full of questionings, uh, this person is talking about a different thing or looking at the same thing in a different angle. And if I go to the fraternal talk and I just pour down the doctrine, there is no room for this doctrine to enter this mind and this soul yet. Because I have at first find a way uh, to the light, to bring the light. It's, it's like the room is already closed. It is still closed. The person is just there with turbulence. Okay? So this is the most moment of the transition, of transmutation from my mental and emotional uh, temporary state towards the, my whole being. So let's go there. And then, when I listen to it, I feel a sort of conscious presence. Whenever I say, oh, there is something talking to me, or I am talking to myself, I already displaced my mind that was 100% occupied with the matter because this voice is bringing a presence. And the more I observe and analyze the presence, this presence grows bigger and bigger. And by growing bigger, this is the principle of the matter, two bodies cannot occupy the very same space. It's going to be reducing the mind that was entangled with the preoccupation or with the weariness, etc. And this is the beginning of the end of my involuntary compulsive thoughts because I start crashing. Right? I start realizing, hmm, that's very interesting. This time uh, somebody got uh, grade A and I haven't felt any envious. I'm not envy, envious this time. And I used to be envious. Right? Or somebody said something and I didn't, I didn't say this time, Oh, once again, she's been bragging about something. She's just saying. So I'm no longer in prison in a pattern because I'm observing that my voice is taking me out to another space. Okay? So let's go there. So whenever we open our mental flow, I can create a mental flow opening just by directing my attention to the present moment by focusing on now. So I'm no longer thinking of my past experience as such, like my, my father died, poor me, now I have all the debts, or I'm gonna be assumed the family, or my plan was to leave home, but I'm not gonna leave home now because I have just my mother and my, and my, my brother and sister. So I do not go this way here. I go a different way. It's how do I feel about my father's death? How, how do I feel about responsibility? Why, how do I feel about inheriting a situation that I was not expecting to inherit, right? Or how can I derive an opportunity or a learning or how can I use this situation to get a bigger step? Perhaps this responsibility of family in my mind was, okay, in 10 years time, in all of a sudden, am I going to be able to grab it by the horn? I want to be able to do it and in three years to say, wow, how much I know. And ready for something more impactful. Or I'm thinking just at the, what happened, the death of my father. Right? So it's enough to be intensively aware of the present moment to liberate, we free ourselves from the past and future starting thought. We cannot free ourselves if we think of past and future. So our freedom it is really now. Let's assume that I have a reading here, I'm gonna be talking. If I am all the time concentrate in anticipation what's gonna happen here, I'm gonna feel anxious, tense. I'm gonna be doubting, all right? But if I say, I read it, I understood it, and there will be an opportunity to see how I get across without rehearsing my mind. Let's see how I get across. There is freedom. I'm not tied. 
by the future. Got it? Let's go there. I always end up realizing that my thoughts and my emotions are afflicted because they are parked in prison either in the past or in the future. We have already covered that. When I observe a certain level of disturbance or annoyance inside me or a mental noise, I also understand that I have been avoiding, resisting, and denying a situation. Sometimes we don't realize that because we are not observing ourselves. But in, th in this difficult situation, it is more difficult because I cannot accept it. I'd like to have my way. I'd like to have my grand finale. Or I'd like to rewrite it. And nobody asks, how come that they have turned the page of my book? The book is mine. And all of a sudden, I have a story that, you see what I mean? So that's why we are in a state of turbulence and not getting the calmness inside. Okay? Now, not, not only do I create a discontinuity to the negative thought, because I'm observing, I'm already finding resource, understand how I feel, and see if I'm still stuck or not in the, in the pattern, but I'm also discontinuing this bouncing back and forth between past and future. Because if we, if I not break that, I'll give a, a, a personal example. After 32 years in the hotel industry, when I left it, I, I knew that I was going to be in a void, in a vacuum. Because I didn't leave it because I had another job. I'm going to say, I'm going to be experienced nothingness. But I have to experience and live nothingness and see the value of nothingness. Because if I still keep repeating myself, I had this, I had this, I used to enjoy that, I was entitled to, I am imprisoned by the past. And I cannot find resources. I cannot find any creative process of build or creating a cause for future effect. I'm just elaborating the effect. That's why my present time or my present reincarnation is really present, it's really a gift, because that's my time to rewrite, reinvent, and redo it. All right? So the present is our blessed space of infinite possibilities. I always can deal with the so-called now moment, yet I will never be able to do the same as far as past and future. The answer, the power, the right action on the resource are all here now. There is no resource in the future. There is no resource in the past. One is gone and the other not even is. And why I do not spend time in the present if the resource is here now? I'm delaying. I'm delaying, I'm stagnant. I'm delaying my evolution. Necessarily. Okay? When I see, hear, or feel a negativity growing inside me, I do not consider it a sentence or verdict, because we punish ourselves. We are our own judge. We say, this is because I have not done that. Or when I did it, I was sure that it was a higher price to pay. And now I have, I'm paying that, right? Because I'm sentencing, right? So we have to, this for us, whenever I think like this, is a signage, like signaling. Uh-oh, you are dominated by your mind completely. You, you, you are not leaving room for any other process in a higher, deeper, or broader uh, state of consciousness. Because your consciousness is reduced to what your mind, this is what is called in psychology, for some trend of thoughts, ego. I'm not saying the ego egocentric or ego, I'm um, just boasting, bragging. It is being dominated by this only photograph as if I were this only, with no other possibility of being. Okay? So these are things that is just telling us how to go on. So I have to break my resistance to the present moment, get rid of my denial of the, uh, of the present, withdraw my attention to unnecessary past and future events, get out of time dimension as soon as possible every day. Get out of time dimension, it is temporary. All past will become present, all present will become future. This is a concept of a human being. When you, when you read the spirit books, you say that time is not that this way. Time is what is the perma permanent process. It's just one time. 
right? We divide it pedagogically in three times. And when you start measuring, of course, that somebody's going to be ending with 5,000 years, some people are going to be ending with 2,017 years, other people are going to be ending with 4,000, because we are dividing. This is a cultural category. When you start counting, and where you're based on, in the moon, in the sun, or a convention that are going to be split in 12 months. This is all human's creation. It is not in eternity of all this comes. This is our creation. Right? So time is what really is our prison here. So what I'm just saying here is we have to be witness hours of ourselves to get another dimension of awareness. Otherwise, we're going to be just the, the dimension of our mind. And you're going to see that there is, sub, there is support of that. I just think of what would be or would happen if, that is my mind, would be would happen if. And that is to say, I'm identifying myself with my mind, right? And I'm generating fear. And this is not, no way to cope with, uh, uh, with it because such a street does not exist. I cannot cope with the United States with past, right? It's a mental ghost that we have. So, I've already talked about this. Just the same that I'd like you to see is that negativity cannot come and overcome our presence if we are in the present. Being present in the present. Because all the neg neg negativism, it is going to be coming from either, either one of the other pa or past or future. At the present moment, now has to be the fundamental central point of my life. I have to dwell in the present, and now it's different. Pay conscious visit to the past and future. I'm controlling the past. I'm controlling the process, not being controlled by past and future. Now I'm going to visit my past. I'm in therapy. Let's go together. Now I'm going to be exploring my future. But this is conscious visit. It is not because my mind is dragging me. It's a di completely different story, okay? Sorry, this was fast. So, basically what I'm trying to uh, get here is I only know or enjoy something by knowing and enjoying. It is the ING form. It's the continui continuity. That's the one only way of living, okay? You're gonna see that there is support. That's what I told you. Whenever you have a pain, the pain is so big, we identify so much with the pain that the pain nourishes itself with the pain, from the pain. It feeds itself by generating more pain. And it's an entity. It is something that in your, our mind has a voice, has a command, dominates me, right? Has, to, has its uh, wings and caprice but it's dominating me. It's a body, it's not really something, right? So we're, this is also about the pain here, the pain body can only nourish itself by feeding self pain. Such a pain body wants to identify with myself. Right? It wants my negative and self-destructive thoughts and feelings. It wants to dwell inside myself. I'm just using the, the pain as a human being. It is consuming myself. It is driving my life, the pain, right? Upon observation, such a pain, I do not fight against it. I do not reject the pain. I acknowledge it. I recognize it's unpleasant sensation. I accept. It is what it is. I'm angry. Okay, I'm angry. And so what? What are you going to be doing not to be angry from now on? What's the cause for a new effect? Or are going to be dominated by this anger all the time? Okay, so, and then we're going to be starting redirecting to find some peace, joy, and love. Because so far we've just seen how to get rid of it. All right? I try to break any link of identification between my pain and my mind, which gives me the illusion that I am the pain body. Right? I'm the victim, then we start victimizing ourselves. I am the pain body. Right? The one that has no luck, the one that has no chance. The one that was chosen by somebody else or divinity to carry this cross. Okay? And I do that by exercising the observer's role, by assuming my highest conscious position, by being the witness of myself, by being present in the present, 
by meeting my other inner force that feeds from the power of the present moment, the power now. Now, I look for my broader, higher, and deeper conscious level so that I can keep, I have to be friend of my defects. This is very difficult because generally we don't accept the defect or we deny the defect, right? Or we lie to ourselves. But for us to transform, there is only way of transforming life is with love. I have to be minimum a friend of my defect. I'm not going to be racist. I may hide it. Right? I may suffocate it, it's going to be coming out later on. But the only way of transforming, transmuting, transfiguring, reassigning myself is to be a friend of myself. There's another way. And if I'm not friend of my defect, not even friend of yours. If I'm not able to be friend of mine, why should I be putting up with yours? Right? We'll never love our friends and our enemy if we do not go through this process. We are unable to love our neighbor, unable to love our enemies if we, do, we are not even friends with our own defect. Because my, my enemy and my neighbor is inside me. When I'm observing myself splitting, that's my neighbor. Right? So this is a process here. And it's funny because in, in, Joanna, in uh, Juana the Angelis, she goes all the time talking about what is the mind, how the mind builds up the ego. And the ego here, in a very good sense, not ego, criticizes the ego as egocentric or uh, boastful, right? And how you move towards your being. The more you think of, uh, I have a part of myself that is superior and above this limited pain body. <coughs> Somebody already told us, you are God. You can do as much as I do, right? So it means that I have a potential. That the seed, that the mold, the, the, the model, or the, whatever is there as my stereotype of, of uh, development is not limited to my pain body. So that's moving towards your, our, and your and mine uh, uh, being, what is more eternal. It is a work process. That's why the reading says it's perennial, it's incessant. Okay? <coughs> and here, if I do not find out this presence that show my whole potential, that show a being of light, right? I cannot have the potential or the intention to meet God. <coughs> it's going to be very difficult. The road, the bridge is very, very long. Because I'm not meeting myself in my own light. How am I going to be looking at the glaring God? He's going to be killing me. So there is not a natural transition. So I should explore my own light to see your own light. And we have here the, in the principle of cooperation. Patricia is saying that we have to cooperate. We have to work together so the other brothers. And when I go light with light, I really have more than one being of light. I have some sample of the light. Otherwise, it's going to be blinding me. Very difficult, OK? So let's move. We know that for us to get the conscious in a very broader, deeper sense, we have to go to the conscious. And it's the conscious that is written according to spiritism. It is there that is written the map not to be identified with the pain of body, not to be minimized. So, so we have to go through these laws. The present is my possibility of exercising goodwill. The present is my possibility of repairing. That's why the mother's womb is my blessed door to redemption, right? And it's my time to construct. And it's my time also to destruct, right? I'm going to be destroying what? The pain body. The mind that identifies with the turbulence. What is dark inside. It is not a process of a coexistence. I have to decrease my shadow side 
so that, like eclipses, so that the light is going to be dominating my mind and my body. Our process of evolution is nothing more than that, to become light. Okay? I'm just, this is just, uh, I'm going to be focusing here just what, to remember us. I do not shrink and lift myself to the pain body. I'm bigger and more than it. I can observe it. I can identify myself with the source of renewal vital energy. Whenever I'm, I'm celebrating life, whenever I'm sharing good aspect with everybody, whenever I'm enjoying your light or I'm studying here at the center, I am renewing vital energy. Okay? These are the process that we have already talked. How do I feel myself? I'm just repeating here in a very didactic way to, for us to know. And we have to think of, am I really being intensively or am I just dwelling in other dimensions that is not being, ing, present, time, present tense here. All right, the continuous present. When I keep m myself or me in the present with my own self, Judgment, criticizing, and suffering is going to be disappearing because I live with me. I love me. I love my defect. And because I love my defect, I'm going to be loving somebody else's defect. Then you say, why do I love this person with so many defect? All right, you listen. Okay, because you know. You, you have mercifulness. You have in, in, indulgence. You have charity. We cannot go to love without passing through this. That's why it is without charity, there's no salvation. It's not only helping others. We have to help ourselves, accepting our dark side and accept the closest one dark side. And then we're going to be going to love. We cannot jump that. Yeah, I'm going to finish in two minutes. Exercise my free will. Okay, so I've already told you that. This is how to eradicate. I have to say yes to my present situation, not no rebellion to what exists, right? This is the same thing here. Whenever I caught myself doing something wrong with his caught red hand or with the hand in the cookie jar, right? I say, oh, stop. That's not, I'm deviating from my conscience. I'm deviating from the light. I'm creating, causing darkness, right? So basically, when I don't like something, I have three possibilities. Either I leave the situation, or I change the situation, or I accept it totally. This is the serenity player that everybody knows, right? So famous serenity player. Give me the strength to differentiate what I can change or not change, okay? I'm gonna be skipping this to go to my life situation is not my life, or I've seen that situation is temporary, my life it was permanent. Right? My life is the now. It is what real, the real thing here. We're going to be in place, peace and love only after going through this whole process that we have described before. And now we're going to be thinking me as integral, entire, holy, because I'm not denying myself. I'm working with myself. If I see myself holy, I can understand the holy presence, the presence of the divine. Otherwise, I'm just denying the presence of the divine. And we're going to see here that I will, I'm going to be keeping myself connected to get this immense love. I'm just going to go to, if I am in the present, I am able to develop faith. Because I'm able to delegate. Say so somebody with greater power is going to be taking care of me. Otherwise, I'm not able to delegate. I'm still controlling, trying to redo the past and build up my future. Okay? But Patricia talked about lots of opportunity. So reincarnation is opportunity on a daily basis, still day to do it, right? We talk about stagnation. Just reaching what is in the gospel now. Paulo de Tarso. Everything becomes manifested upon being exposed to light. And everything that exposed to light becomes the light. I cannot be in light myself if I'm not exposed to light. So our light here, our paradigm is spiritism. So I have to be exposed to become light. 
Okay? The pain body, which is the dark vital energy, in prison it's connected to the total energy, which is the holy energy. Uh, once exposed to light, it transmutes, transfigures itself in order to become light again. Okay. Paul talked to the Corinthians for God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness. May his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of God. It is already in the gospel talking about the dark and the light side. Right? The same thing here. So we fix our eyes not to, to what is seen, but on what is unseen. Then you're going to be grasping the whole vision of it. John, the very same thing here. He's saying that why am I concerned about the fruit? The fruit is going to be the natural outcome of everything. And for with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. I'm getting close to the end of two slides. Jesus, he, he, Jesus didn't say, I had been in existence before Abraham. His sentence very simple was, before Abraham was, I am. I am is permanent. It is a present. Right? Have a look at the sentence here. God, this is direct voice reported. The spirit is called direct voice. Not using an intermediary. He said, I am what I am. And I am what I am in Hebrew is Yahweh. Yahweh is the word that generated Jehovah. Habe. And that is the verb to breathe in and out in Hebrew. Right? So it's all about the presence here. We are only attracted by an enlightened master because there is enough presence with us to recognize the presence of the other one. If there is no light inside us, we cannot connect to the master. And finish here. Darkness cannot bear the light. So that's the last message. Let's try to work out our dark side, to love our dark side, somebody else's dark side, to be prepared to receive light. Okay, thank you so much.